How's everybody's weekend doing? Hope it's going good. So, I got some friends out this weekend who are helping me out a little building project. And um, I sent one of them to go get more material at the Menards, which is an hour away. And before he left, uh, he forgot to take his bucket out of the truck that had all my tools in it, including my tape measure. Now, it's going to be about a two-hour round trip for him. And in the meanwhile, I could be losing productivity due to the fact I don't have tape measure. But instead, I'm going to show you a little trick. You ever heard of a storyboard? Well, that's what I got here. This is where the term storyboard comes from. What I did is I went down to the runs that are finished down there. And I squared up this board at the top of that run. And I made a mark where the middle board top is. But this board is not long enough to reach to the bottom. So then I shifted this board down so that the second line where it says mid to find bottom was where that mark was. And then that allows me... To establish where the bottom is up here I took some measurements off of the string line that is running across the tops to two boards or two posts that are too short so I just measured from the string line down to the post made a mark and then that way I know what to cut those posts at now that's the height of the post but I'm gonna notch them so that they overlap so I'm actually gonna cut the first one this long and then this section will be notched that way they'll fit better. And then the second one will be this long, but with this much added below it. So, you don't always need things like tape measures. And sometimes you got to think, what did we do before we had modern tools? And this is one of those situations. So it's coming along together. We're getting the tops put in. And uh, now we're coming along with the bottoms and middles across the front. Once we get that done, we will, uh, once the posts are done set and we got four more to set, we'll come through the middle and do the middle and bottom going this direction. The back posts here, I'm probably going to, oh, I haven't quite made up my mind yet. What I probably should do, I guess I should say, is cut the post flush with the bottom of this 2x4 as we go down the line so that when I put my 2x4 header on it actually will line up right. Well, it's 7.30 Sunday morning. You can see we got quite a bit done yesterday. We've gone through and got all the top two by fours in place. And we got our bottoms and middles for the front. We have not put in the bottoms and middles going through here yet because we have to lace this wire on top together, but we do have it stapled. So that'll be the first thing we do this morning. We'll take some electric fence wire and we'll pull the slack out and lace this two sections of four foot chicken wire together so it becomes one tight section. Once that's done, we'll cut it off at the end, staple it in place, and then we can start putting in our 2x4s running across here and we can also do the wire that's going to go along here and depending on how far we get we'll do our wire that goes across each one of these sections other things we got to do we got to cut these posts and these 2x4s so that our header for the shed is where it needs to be. Otherwise, it's going to be too high. And we have strung out more string line. 
so that we can dig the posts for the back wall of the shed. So that's where we're at so far today. Tuesday morning now and we've got the wire all the way down this direction to here we've got the wire across the top and now I'm lacing it together so I thought I'd talk a little bit about that you can use cage clips that's fine this is just the way that I was taught take your electric fence wire and you're basically going to thread it through the two pieces of wire now here it's already touching but as you can see we've got bubbles and slack and all kinds of things so I've actually put the uh, wire through the hexagons further back so that when I pull tight it'll pull that slack out of it now down here I've got some of it that's already pulled together and as you can see, I had to uh, pull it quite a bit and put it further back on the hexagon. So that's why we've got this weird little seam here. But that is pretty tight. And as we get down further, it gets even tighter. So as we continue to pull it just tightens it up once we've tightened it all up i'll be putting staples along here up top and that'll help with the wire um, not sagging as bad in the winters so what you do is you lace your wire from one end and you just keep working it working it as you go you have to keep going back to the spool feeding yourself more wire working it down the loop so it takes quite a bit of time but once you get going you can pull it tight now at the very start of the end down here where the uh, we started pulling the wire tight you got a little bantam running loose here But where we started pulling it tight, you had to initially pull every single time with the pliers just to get going. After a while, though, you start getting some slack that you can start yanking on, and gradually that slack will get longer and longer. So you kind of got to gauge at what point down the pen do you want to quit lacing the wire through and start pulling it um, I could have probably stopped what well, we got here about 60 foot that we're doing I probably could have stopped at about 30 feet because the slack from the loops probably would have gave me the other 30 feet feet instead we kept going until we got down to just 20 feet and now we're to the point where I've got I would say easily 40 feet of slack that I'm dealing with here. So I've got these two here. Nice thing about having that much slack is you can just put your body weight in behind it and lean to pull tight. Bad thing is, is as you work it, it almost gets to where you need two people and you have to watch it from twisting on itself. So I could continue to fight it or I could just start feeding it through the loops again. It's easier to do it with two hands, obviously, and working it down that way to try and eat up some of the slack. But what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to cut it and splice it so that we'll basically be starting from, I'm basically going to cut it about here and take all this slack off because we're not, we're going to end up with it being extra anyway by the time we get to the end. I've spliced it and I've looped it together. You want to try and keep your loops small. 
and this tail here, you want to bend it back this direction because you're pulling this way and it'll just catch otherwise. But it's a good idea to try and make your seam as close to the wire as you can so you don't have to keep continuously coming down here and messing with it to feed it through. You can also do this if you misjudged the amount of wire you needed and you came up short. So I'm not that far from where I spliced, maybe eight foot away, and you can already see how much extra I've got pulled out of it. When you're doing this, you want to just kind of get your hand in here, pull back and give it a good tug. But as you go to grab the next uh, loop up top, you're going to use your left hand to pull it towards you while your right hand is guiding this current loop back up towards the chicken wire so that it does not twist. As you can see that bay did not pull as tight as I wanted and that's because I did not go far enough back on the wire when I was lacing it through but if I really really need to I can come over to this side up here and I can pull the material over the 2x4 with a hammer and then take another hammer and or actually a pair of pliers and then hammer it over with staples but I think it's gonna be okay now I do about the third bay in the material is kind of flimsy um, it's not as tight as I wanted because I didn't uh, put the wire through far enough back to get a good cinch to it but I think it's gonna be all right overall it's got a nice ping to it about like a tennis racket when you cut your wire though you want to go in the middle you don't want to go to the end especially like if I have my staple here if I were to cut right up against here and right up against here that just frees those so that they can pull right through. So what I'm doing now is I'm going through and putting in the 2x4s for the divide walls on the runs that will support the tin and the wire. Now you might be wondering why I didn't do that when we were framing up everything else. The reason I left them out was so that it'd be much easier to install the wire on top. We could just walk this whole way without having to step over anything. So now that that is all taken care of, I just got to keep pushing forward and I'll get this part done. So now I've started putting the wire on these divider walls. Here's a little tip I wanted to pass on quick. I don't know if you're going to be able to see that with the direction of the sun or not but you put your staple in part way when you're just packing it up and then once you've got it where you want it you start at one end go ahead and start stapling it in place and that allows you to adjust the other staples or remove them as needed as you go